All right, we're live. Another episode of Inside the GIFA. Season seven, episode four. Damn, seven seasons. Holy shit. Oh, we're doing this too long. Uh, of course, we're we're missing one. We're missing uh, Travis today. Coach T should be on maybe a little bit later. Probably not, though. Uh, but we do have <laughs> four on. Uh, Thor, good to see you winning again, so you're back on here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so interesting week. Uh, Wildcats got the forfeit win after the whole uh, Savages debacle, uh, 48 nothing. For those playing at home, the reason why we gave them 48 is because it's their average scores in their past couple of games. Just like the uh, Raptors will get a 26 point, 26 nothing win this week against the Savages. That's what happens when you forfeit. A uh, couple of really good games. Uh, some games that were closer than originally thought. Others were blowouts. But it's what game you guys want to get into first. <laughs> I mean, I assume there's some people out there that want to hear a little bit about it. Um, so I would suggest maybe we talk about the Raptors and the Miners. All right. Well, let's get into it. Uh, Raptors win six to two. Uh, game called right before the second half. Uh, right before were, the bottom of the second inning. <laughs> yep. Bottom of the second inning. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> what the hell is Vinny doing? I don't know. He he got dropped. But anyway, um, bottom of the second inning, uh, Raptors threw a pick, and then all hell broke loose. Uh, Player from the minors got face mask the hell. Um, yeah, my dad, dad ran onto that. the field. <laughs> Vinny, you want to talk about it? Yo, man, don't be grabbing people by the face mask and throwing them to the ground. That's all I got to say. That shit's <laughs> dirty football. No place for that. I can't even that. take you seriously right now. You don't got to. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jurassic Park up in here. <laughs> Tell him, Benny. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a little uh, a little out of line. A little bit. <laughs> no, that I shit mean, was all the way out of line. You could you could uh you could call some <laughs> serious injury with something like that, man. I mean, whipping a guy around by his neck, basically, like. I didn't realize no, it was done that early. There I, was I thought no, that was later no in the game. For that. Yeah. And then the. Uh, I guess it was a, a fan from the minors went on the field and started pushing people. And then Katie barred a door were next minute, you know, state police were called and not a good look. <laughs> wow. Not the police. 
I mean, okay, anytime. Okay. Expansion director, what's your take on that? It's tough, um, you know, because you want to see it from both perspectives. I mean, one is I want everybody who comes in that I've been working with, of course, to to put out the absolute best product that they possibly can. But at the same time, I also understand what it was being a first year um, coach and owner. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to be in a stadium the way that I am. And it really helps us keep a separation between players and fans and parents and everything because we have the fencing. Now, there's some games where, you know, you're just out in the community park. And, I mean, it's really hard to be expected to stop somebody from running onto the field like that when you're in a situation where you don't have the barriers to help you. Um you know, it's tough because like you want to you want to be like, oh, the Raptors are, are starting stuff. And by all means, that tackle by the face mask was disgusting. And, and you could say maybe started it. But I think, you know, the, the major explosion from at least what I've I've seen, because I had some outside people um, send me some videos that I looked at and stuff. And that guy coming out on the field was definitely, you know, the 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 spark that lit everything. Um, you know, and it's hard to not see the Raptors perspective because the Raptors had no way of knowing that wasn't one of their coaches. I mean, think about it. You're from the Raptors and, and a middle aged man just runs out and starts pushing around your players. The odds of it not being a coach based on all the other football experiences I've been through in my life is slim, you know. So I also understand a little bit of of push back from the Raptors on that perspective and and it is a black eye it's terrible that that this happened I know I know there was other things that ended up making things boil up even worse and and I just hope that um you know the owners and these experiences use this as a, a very good learning opportunity I mean find a way to get the barriers and if you guys don't have them come up with some kind of way to get some like roping and, and something to help keep people out because ultimately, you know, I, I want to be like, Hey, how's it the, the miners fault. But at the same time, I mean, it was a miners fan that came off their sideline that that charged the field. It was associated with a player, you know, it's, it's just a tough situation. And I think that both programs need to really dial in and, and think about how that they can deal with these situations moving forward, because, if it happens again, I'm sure the way our disciplinary committee is set up that, that, you know, the hammer will drop and, and it'll put both of them in situations they don't want to be in. So, I mean, it's about all I got on that matter. I mean, I just, I really hope it's a learning experience for them. I mean, for two teams on probation, cause they're both new to the league, two teams on probation, like you don't get a second chance. <laughs> I mean, you mess up a second time, like you're definitely gone. Right. Like there's just there's just no place for that, man. I mean, that's the thing we're trying to get rid of most in this league. All that unnecessary shit gotta stay where it's supposed to. Just play football. I mean, it's crazy because most people take something really serious. Um, if they have financial investment, I mean, off the football field, you know, any hustle where you have money invested, you're definitely paying attention to it and you're doing what you need in order to keep the, the hustle going. But for some reason, I don't think people gather that on the field. I mean, you guys all have financial investments, in the gear, your jerseys, your traveling expenses, the, the time of work that you gave up to be at practices and stuff like that. And, to me, it's wild that people don't look at it from that perspective and understand that, like, you got to be able to control yourself. Jamie Early from the Mustangs said that uh, same thing happened with him with his youth team. And they said the most cost effective way was those orange construction fencing. I mean, I've, yep. I've seen it in uh, multiple team sidelines. They have fans everywhere. 
I know when I ref the uh, Wildcats Warriors, they had to have about 200 people on their sideline. And like, what are we doing? Like, one spark, <laughs> and you have zero control. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's either in, in the I'm pretty sure it's in the bylaws or the rules that there has to be a perimeter around the field. Like, I mean, that's always that's always been a rule in this league. I remember when we played it out right. here at the lakes a long time ago. The hell was that? Oh, anyway. Yeah, I remember when we played at the lakes, we used to put in, like, posts and rope and shit to, to keep people back away from the field. So, I'm not I'm not exactly sure why we're not still doing that. Yeah, if I was in that situation, I'd probably be putting out, like, orange cones and just running some, like, cost tape in between it all. Like, something. Because at least at that point, if something like that happens, I mean, it's easy to say the person didn't just come off my sideline. So, yeah, or you got to have some kind of staffing in place that's going to, you know, keep fans off the field or keep them, you know, in a certain place. Like, I know even teams that have stadiums that they play in on turf fields and shit that have stands, there's still people that come on the field. I mean, you know, that's kind of like the nature of our league. But, I mean, if you can't control your fans, then you need to do something. That's all I can say. I remember the one Keystone Bowl. I told everybody to stay away from the sidelines. And I think it was Comanche Cyclones. And two people from the, the Cyclones pulled out lawn chairs and sat right on the sideline after I told them to go. I was so pissed. I'm like, what, what, didn't he just hear what the hell I said? You see what I'm saying, man? People just be wild like that. That's what I said. Shit. I got, we got seating. We got stadium seating. People still stand on the field. <laughs> Everybody wants that sideline pass. All right, let's move on to the next game. Uh, Mustangs at Bolts. Mustangs win their second game, legit game of the season, 106 to nothing. I was at that game serving my roughing suspension, hmm. trying to be my, uh, live my best Corey Miller life, holding the sticks. Were they kicking onside? I didn't see the game. Were they kicking onside and halftime? No, and not. Uh, in the second half, I, I left after the whole. I heard about the whole like Raptors uh, minors thing. Uh, it was eighty-six nothing the third quarter. In that time, there was like four pick sixes, uh, mm -hmm. two safeties. I mean, the, the Bolts were doing everything they could just to try to get something going, and it's it just wasn't working. I think it was 66 nothing at halftime. Maybe even a little Damn. bit less, but. Damn. Damn. I think, that, I think that's also the perfect time for us to maybe discuss kind of what we were talking about the other day where, you know, blowout games and, and how it looks for the league. I understand that there's different scenarios, though, where things happen because I've had 200-point games myself. Um you know, one of which uh, a team refused the mercy rule. They said, look, you know, just because we're losing doesn't mean we deserve to play less of the game. We don't want to accept the mercy rule. So we played the whole clock. Um, the other one was the mountain men. Um, but the fact of the matter is, that, like, my second string is better than several teams' first string. And, and my third string isn't bad either. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, yeah. those are games where, Welcome back. Right. I missed you last week, Thor. <laughs> um, so Damn. this is where these guys play. <laughs> bop, bop, and bop. if my 
third string and second string guys are scoring all over you, you know, again, they deserve to play the game just as much as anybody else. You know, James did point out here, you know, that, that the Mustangs um, had a bunch of defensive scores at the end of the game. Again, you can't expect people to just take a knee and not score when they catch an interception. Come on now. That's not realistic. You know, I'm, it's not like going into the fourth quarter and being ahead a ridiculous amount and then taking time out to try to have one last score at the end of the game. That's, that's where things kind of turn asinine in my opinion. Um, but there, there are factors that go into whether or not a blowout happens and, and like Kerr, you, you've been known for being one of those guys that like, even when you can blow people out, somehow you find a way not to. Um, but accidentally you can blow somebody out in this league, I feel. And, and I, I, I get both perspectives of it. Yeah. You, you don't know, accidentally my, score. <laughs> I have accidentally, accidentally in a league where the hey, clock I've, barely stopped. I've never accidentally, accidentally dropped a hundred points. And when did we hang on? When did we get so soft? Cause Last year at this time, we're talking about, yo, hang 100 on them, hang 100. Now it's, oh, well, we can't be hanging 100 on these. No, fuck that. Get better. Play better defense. <laughs> Look, I'm, if you're giving up 100 when multiple we played, times a year, play better defense. Fuck all that. We, we got played hard the play better. Watch film. <laughs> Do your homework. We played the mountain. I blinked and scored a buck 10 on them guys. I mean, right. it accidentally. Accidentally? Happens, but at the accidentally? Time, I mean, you want me to just. Neil, you want me to just not like have a defensive lineman go through the ball and cause a fumble and scoop it up and score? No, you want, want me to get hang a hundred on. Not like I'm still going to play football, and I expect that out of like every other team in the game. I mean, just put yourself in the perspective of a third string guy on a deep team. Like you go in waiting for all these opportunities to go in and prove your shot. And yes, obviously you're playing a team where the opposition isn't super great, but still they get out and they get a chance to ball. And that's why I'm not even into the mercy rule. I'm not, I, I don't want it. I don't, I, I don't like it. And you I know, agree. people are going to have their opinions on it, but like, <clears throat> it's not, it shouldn't be a penalty to me that I'm going to dress 38 guys in a game and we blow you up and you just take the clock away and get in your car and drive home. Like, you know, there's, there's other guys in the game, you know, you want depth. You tell everybody, you know, one of the biggest things in this league towards success for a championship is having depth on your team. Something happens. You need somebody to step up. That's actually quality or you're going to fall off. You need the depth and those late games or, or, or games where you're blowing somebody out is a great opportunity for those guys to get the reps that they've earned. I mean, I, I've been on that side where a team scored 98 on us. Uh, I remember that game against the Cyclones and I went home and my wife's like, Oh, how'd you guys do? I'm like, Oh, we scored 68. And she goes, Oh, so you won. I'm like, no, we lost by 30. <laughs> 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 I'm I'm with Thor, man. I I mean I I hate the mercy rule. Like we're grown ass adults, grown ass men. You know what I mean? When these boys went to college, or you know some of these guys play you know professional ball in these other leagues, like do they have a mercy rule? Fuck no. You know what I mean? You're grown ass men. We ain't kids. That's high school shit. That's where that came from. High school rules and stopping teams from quitting during games. You know what I mean? Right. Well, it's football, a different league now. Like, loses love of the game. It's a different league now. Like back back when that rule was instituted, instituted, we didn't we didn't penalize teams for forfeit games. You forfeit a game now, it don't matter when you forfeit. Second half, third quarter, you know, five minutes ago in a game, it don't matter. It's still a three hundred dollar fine, and you probably get in the boot. I mean, like there's repercussions for it now. There wasn't back then. Like, to me, the mercy rule only, only says, hey, man, you know, we don't want to kick the shit out of you that much. But they got guys that are like, yo, we pay to play football, man. Some of these guys pay 300 bucks to play football, if not more. 
you know what I mean? Or have to do a bunch of fundraisers and shit. They got to put in their own time, their own money. And then we're telling them all, oh, well, because your team's not as good as the team you're playing against and they're kicking the shit out of you, we're going to shorten the game up on you. I'm, hey, I'm not saying that there aren't some coaches and owners that would definitely take that that mercy rule. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of them that wouldn't. Yeah, I'm not I, here to play football. I have to I, – I agree with you, Brent, a little bit for the most part. But over my career, I've always erred on the side of I don't like to embarrass people. True. When, but that's just how I do it. I'm not saying what you guys, what your your opinions are, are wrong, but it's just something I've always done until until last year. There was a, there was a team that we were playing that wore headsets. Don't tell me why. And they wanted to talk shit to me, and I'm like, oh, let's go, boys. Time to run up to score. Then we dropped the hundred on their ass. They can shove those headsets up their ass, but nonetheless, <laughs> I usually don't get upset. But that guy pissed me off. I love it. <laughs> I could have easily ran the ball, but we're kicking on sides. You want to talk shit? You know, so it can go both ways. I can see what right. you're saying. So are you against headsets? Or... I'm against headsets when you don't even have a damn stadium that you could go up top and use the headsets. It looks ridiculous. That's my opinion. <laughs> I concur. Sorry if you're listening and I'm hurting your feelings, but that looks ridiculous. It's a 50 yard field and you got headsets on. You fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. This is I what happens it. when y'all don't post film and we don't got no film to watch before we come on. <laughs> we yeah. just come on and start. We roasting. just go on some rants. <laughs> Uh, I bet I'm you don't be filmed up next Sunday. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get Billy Splain on here from uh, PA Football News. How did you How did you manage to pick them them up? That's awesome, having them come to games. James. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he just don't want to ask you. He, he, he you. can't do two things at once, I see. <laughs> it's like looking at seven different screens over there. It's like <laughs> it's a matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh, he was at our game on Saturday against the Tomahawks. Hey, he was all over it. And I, he was there. I think it was the same one that was at the Vikings game, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, he seems to dig it. Like, he seems like he's in. Like the crews, of, the crew of guys that he's got working with him. Like they seem like Thor, they love it, it. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was reading the comments while we're waiting here. Thor, is it true you guys use walkie-talkie? So in the past, I've used them on offense when I, but only when I had a guy in the box. Um, defensively we did this year but we also had a coach that had a, a health condition and we put him up in the box so we wanted to keep him involved so I mean yeah we've used walkies you, you have a stadium though so, but I mean you could have somebody up top to get a different view right absolutely if you're using it for a stadium I don't see any issues but when you're talking to a guy that's five feet from you you don't need headsets <laughs> Well, shit. What's the next game, James? Let's keep this train rolling. All right. Uh, Warriors at uh, Spartans at Warriors. Warriors win seventy-two to six. Oh, hold on. Billy's on here now. What's going on, gentlemen? How you doing? How are you? Billy, you're Welcome very to the demanding show. tonight. What's that? You're very demanding tonight. <laughs> so I have opinions on a couple of things that I've noticed so far in three weeks. It goes back to, um, first of all, 
I didn't know about this league. I heard you guys just discussing it. I didn't know about this league right away. Um, I knew the Tomahawks existed, but I didn't know much about this league. And I've been doing this for 25 years. So when I discovered it, I was like, hey, I think we can be mutually beneficial here. Um, it gives my guys something to do in the spring. And I can bring you guys my 1.5 million people that come to my website every year. Um, you're, it, it's already getting big. The stuff I'm putting up there is getting big hits. A lot of kids are noticing it. And the other thing is you had a kid from Columbia that I actually covered last year in the game this week. Um, the new kid from Columbia. Uh, he played for the Cyclone, Cyclones on Brent's team. Yep, Javon. A lot of kids that don't know about this league that maybe, you know, if, if we're putting it on our website, maybe they come to your league. You know, I know you don't have much problem down in Bedford because um, from what I understand, I talked to Kevin Steele, a lot of guys down that way know that, know the know the league and the team pretty good. So down, down in the Somerset, Bedford area, it's well known. But we, we can still bring you a draw. Um, I don't see a lot wrong with the league. I, I like it. I like the action. It's great. Um, the coaches do a good job. It's a lot more professional than I thought it was going to be. So, and, and I'm really enjoying it. All right. So, Billy, you and I talked about this the other day. What was uh, some of the things you see with our league that you feel we could do better with? Well, there needs to be consequences. Um, too much, there's, there's too much drawing that's allowed, too much drawing that gets allowed on, the si on each sideline. So we have to have ejections. We have to have coaches pulling guys. If we're going to, if I'm, if I'm going to help this league, step, you know, with, with, with notoriety and publicity, um, I'd just like to see coaches be responsible and say, hey, either shut your mouth or sit down, just play football. And a lot of that, when people when it gets heated, if you don't have barriers, those people that are not behind barriers, they're like on the team, so they're part of the team. So when your team gets heated, that boils right over into the fan base, and that's why you that could be a possible reason why you had happened what you had this weekend, where fans came on the field and got crazy. Um, I do agree, there should be some kind of barrier because a simple rope. I don't understand it, but like I've seen it at many stadiums, people think that thing's like a steel cage. I, I don't get it, but it works. <laughs> but I mean, I like the league. I, I do. There's not much to complain about. There really is not much to complain about. The play is good. I've seen some awesome plays by some by some guys that were that have just laid themselves out. It's been great. And then I saw a little guy put a pop on the freight train from the Tomahawk set. Uh, you know, and he was the new guy. That's the new guy from Columbia that plays for a cyclone. So it's a great league. I, I enjoy it. We we covered three games. I actually got a guy when I was up visiting Thor's team. Um, he wrote for the Vikings this week. Uh, he's a new writer on our website. So he's going to be writing about the Vikings every week. Um, Doug Lane, I've got him on board. He's going to go to a different game every week. I think he's going to um, Williamsport this coming weekend. And he's going to cover game he's going to send me a gallery so we'll get that so you know that's what i do i go after people and and you know this is going to pay off for me because now i have three guys that are going to join me in the fall so i love it it's awesome and i am coming to bedford what else you guys got for billy Doesn't man. I mean, he pretty much summed it all up. Just nice to hear somebody else's perspective that's not tied to the GFA at all and hear what they have to say about the league. You know, it's nice to know that we're not as trailer park as everybody seems to think that we are. <laughs> well, you actually have, see, there's the thing. You actually have that stigma still about the league. Um, when I talked to a couple of head coaches from, from high schools, um, one coach definitely said, you know, uh, yeah, I was at one a few years, quite a few years back, he said, but you know, they go out and drink beer and smoke cigarettes at halftime, you know, kind of like that. But I don't see any of that at the, at the three games I've been at. Brian hasn't seen it at the games he's been at. Uh, so you guys are trying to get away from that. And, and you know, 
I get it, you know, and I'd like to help you break that stigma too. So we'll do whatever we can. The other thing I would like to mention though, um, going back to the mercy rule things, 150 points scored on a team looks way worse than canceling a game at halftime. I get it. The kids pay, or the guys pay, you know, a couple bucks to play football. I get that. I do. But in order for a league, I mean, like how many hundred pointers did we have this week? Like 75 point games, 75 point wins. We, we, we've we already had I'd sure seen like five at least. That's yeah. I, I, their new teams. So like, I get that part too. Um, my opinion is, uh, as as a promoter, as, and I'm I'm a promoter. I'd rather see the game end once once it's a fifty point lead or a sixty point lead, whatever. So you know maybe sixty five point lead. I'd rather see it end than see a score that says one hundred and nine to nothing. Because to me that says, well, this league's a joke. You know. Um, I do understand that it's against like the Bolts are new and they've had a hundred points scored on them a couple of times. And um, the other team's new and they've had a hundred points scored on them. I get that part. I get the part where the players, you know, they want to play, but um, what as a league, you have to figure out what as a league, your goal is, what is our league's goal? Do we want to go from here to here? Or are we good just being here? We'll score 150 points. We're just going to stay here because I, you know, like I said, I like this league and, and I'd like to get behind it with my brand. And I don't know the Buffalo's coach. I don't, I don't think we've met, um, but uh, I have fundraising abilities. Um, I can help you guys raise a ton of money. Per team. I don't know if you're, if you're sending that, to, I, I am not a Buffalo's coach. I am just a fan, but uh, <laughs> I know they listen and they will probably reach out. But uh, no, definitely though. Uh, yeah, fundraising is great. So Buffaloes, reach out to this gentleman. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who all y'all are. So, so I, you know, I don't know who y'all are. I know the three guys that I know are, I'm looking at right now. You know, are Brent Thor and El Presidente. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on my Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like just just little things like that, you know. I mean, you guys can really clean it up. And again, I'll just say it one more time: I like the product. I some of the some of the videos I put out have have been seen 70,000 times, and and that's a lot of high school kids are looking at it too. A lot of high school kids are looking at it, and you know, who knows? Maybe you get a college coach look at it, and, and it's a it's a twenty year old kid making a play, and maybe he gets a break. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and every college coach, I do recruiting too. So every college coach in the state and the surrounding area knows who I am. So they, they kind of follow up. I, as a matter of fact, I did see two college coaches retweet one of the hits from two weeks ago. So they thought it was cool too. So they're watching too. So like we have, our audience is all over the place. They're watching. Um, you I, have a college coach at every game, yeah. sir. What's that? Did you have a college coach at every game? I coach for Shippensburg University. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, yeah, we met. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys are coming to my town at York. Whatever that. It's not a combine. It's a showcase. Yes. The practice. So we, we have to rename it practice. But uh, yeah, and there were high school like uh, the guy from uh, up in uh, Scranton. He, I knew, I knew one of the guys on their team because he coached high school football. I knew him too. So I know a lot of you guys. I know a lot of guys on your teams, uh, Brian. I know a lot of his guys because I live in Center Hall. So no, and I knew Thor. I knew most of your team. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. It's it's really I, I love it. I, it's really cool. So I think we'll have four games covered this weekend. Do you know which four games? I don't. I'll let you know on. I, well, Brian decided where he's going. We call Brian Hollywood, by the way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got him to go to the Mustang Warriors. Yeah, he's going to the Warriors game. Yeah, he lives up that way, so it's easier for him to go to those games. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I personally won't be going to a game, but I know two other, two other guys on my team are going to go to a game. And we used to have a guy that used to come to the job. 
team too. When, when there was a Johnstown team, we, we, we covered them once in a great while. And that's how I knew about this league. But I didn't know anything about it. I just knew about it. I don't, oh, I have Williamsport covered too. That's the, the Buffalo's Wildcats. Oh, That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that should be, that looks like a good game. Listen, you guys are doing the right thing. You're doing it right. You just need to tweak a few things. And as coaches, you know, I'd love to sit down with, like I said before, I, I, I told you guys, I'd love to sit down with you guys, all the, all the owners, and just say, here's what I can bring to the league. And here's what, as a person who runs the Big 33 game, the East-West games, um, as I, I do college recruiting, and I covered over 750 high school football games last year. I've probably covered over 1,000 in my lifetime. Um, I work with the PSFCA, which is the State High School Coaches Association. I see things that can help your league. Well, we We're appreciate all for it. it. <laughs> We're all for it. Yeah, Billy, yeah. I really appreciate you coming and talking to us, man. I mean, um, a lot of the people around the league are talking about it. We see all the shares. I mean, players all over Facebook. I know that you're more of a Twitter guy, but um, the Facebook shares on your guys' um, articles and stuff have been getting – getting tons of shares throughout the league, fans, players, coaches, and uh, people seem excited to be pairing up with you guys, and we appreciate your insight for sure. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and the reason I use Twitter so much is because that's, that's where the football players are. Um, I, like, for this league, and it's going to take some adjusting because I do see there are a lot of Facebook people with this league, there's a, a lot of your like your, your girlfriends, wives, uh, brothers, sisters, and everybody. They're doing the Facebook thing, so I'm going to adjust how I do things. So I'll be posting highlights on Facebook from now on too. Um, I see a lot of that on Facebook. I just I think Twitter is a value to you all if you all had a Twitter page um, because we can promote it. We can promote the page. And like I said, that's where the players are. And maybe you guys get some more quality players. You know, maybe there, there might be a guy out there who wanted to go to college, but he's a welder, but he still wants to play football, you know, and he's, a, he's an all-state football player, and he doesn't know about this league. I bet there's a lot of guys like that out there. Yep, there is. Maybe someday we help you expand West. And South. <laughs> I can see this really being big up in like Red Bank area, up in Clarion. And that area. I can see this being really big there. I don't know about the Whitfield. Uh, in Pittsburgh, I don't know. That's a that's a funny area, but up in north central Pennsylvania, I think, you know, like western central PA, like Clarion, Dubois, and all that area, I can see this being a big thing up there if they had a team. We we they did for a long time. We actually had a team in, in Dubois and a team yeah. in Punxsutawney. Um, yeah. The team in Dubois, um, they were around for like 10 years, I think. Um, but they just got to the point where a lot of the guys involved with the team kind of aged out and recruiting didn't necessarily work out the way that they wanted it to. And same kind of with the group in Punxsy. So ultimately their guys ended up coming and joining my team. Um, so a lot of the draw from the West, I pull, but you're right. I mean, I think all the way out in Clarion, if we could get a team out there with that distance in between us, I think we would pull a ton of people, um, if we had interest in a Clarion team. Um, I know Erie has a big semi-pro 11 man team, but I also think that they have a market that could hold an eight man team. Um, but like you said, it's about getting the exposure and getting us out there and letting people know about it because, I mean, pulling players is great too, but being able to pull additional owners would be fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
And, and like I said, you, like you said, the first thing is getting the exposure and getting it out there. And, you know, another thing that might have helped those teams is, you know, um, I definitely want to hook you guys up with my guys from the funding zone and do a fundraiser. It's called Blast. It's easy. Um, I won't go into it here. We won't clog up your whole broadcast tonight with all this stuff. But, I mean, some of the stuff I see in this league is, is just really good. I like it. I like it a lot. You know, and, and, and I'd like to see it improve and, and, and get bigger. I know um, I've been told that, you know, by the president, by this Presidente, that you guys have been voted the best eight-man league, you know, the semi-pro league in the country a couple times. And, like, you know, let's get that out there. I, I did notice WNEP has – is it NEP? Yeah. They've been at two games now. So um, – that's pretty cool. They actually they they, they put it on their on their news, newscast, so I, I think that's cool. Out here in Central PA, Thor, we got nobody because like WJAC has one sportscaster. That's it. <laughs> right. And, I've, and I've PHA struggled for doesn't care about anything but Penn State. <laughs> yep. That's tough. But yeah, I mean that's another reach that we have. Like we're friends with all you know, all the newspapers, all the all the um, television guys. They, we, we know each other very well, and I could I could just be like, hey, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to talk to one of my guys who uh, from WBRE is in Williamsburg. I'm going to say, hey, why, you know, Joe, why aren't you going over there and covering these games? You know, so I'm going to see if Joe will go over and cover a game. Awesome. Well, we, we do really appreciate it, Billy. We we like um, everything that we're seeing as far as us teaming up together and really appreciate you coming on and joining us in the conversation here and we look forward to talking to you in the future. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I won't be around this weekend. I got a big church function. We're building a giant um, playground on our church grounds for the uh, youth group. So I'll be at that all day on Saturday working some saws and drills. Uh, you guys working your own drills. Hey, I'm going to get going here. I'm going to let you guys have your broadcast back. Have fun. We're definitely going to keep back in this league. Um, just, you know, let's let's get some of the jawing under control. And, you know, some of that's on the coaches. You guys can help that. Thanks, You're going to love them baptisms, Billy. See you guys around, man. Take care. Hey, Billy. Thanks. Peace out. All right, let's get back into the games. <laughs> uh, like I said, Warriors win 72 to 6 over the Spartans. Uh, moving on, Buffalo beat the Skyhawks 38 to 12. Wasn't as high as uh, a, much of a blowout as a lot of people thought. Uh, they probably didn't throw one pass a long in that road game. game. Uh, let's get into the next one. Cyclone survive in Mifco. It's a good way to put it. Thirty-four. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good game. <laughs> I mean, Tomahawks came ready to play. That's I don't expect anything less from the Tomahawks so when we play them. They always they usually come ready to play. And that team's definitely come a long way over the last couple of years. Like they took the time to build their shit back up. You know, they had their their championship teams back in sixteen and seventeen. And then they kinda they kinda teetered down to the bottom a little bit, started building their way back up. And, I mean, if you sleep on that team, you're going to get a rude awakening. Like, I thought their offense did extremely well. They were balanced. Um, you know, they made plays when they needed to. They made a bunch of fourth down conversions. You know, we, we, made, a, we made two mistakes in the second half that uh, they capitalized on both of them. And, you know, I mean, we were able to hold on to it at the end. They, they had a chance. They drove down the field. I don't know, Ronnie, what they have left, like fucking 40 seconds or something like that. Yeah, it, it wasn't much. And, you know, they defense stood tall, man. Their, their O-line is – I played them last year, and 
and I, I think it's a totally different team with yeah. with a lot of the same players though. So I, you got to give it to the quarterback. I mean, I don't know if <coughs> I don't know if their coaching's all still the same. I'm not sure who's over there anymore. But um, that run game was was something to watch and how how it unfolded. Um, their blocking schemes. You know, we had, you had to be disciplined. You definitely did. And, and 12 is a big man. He, <laughs> that dude is a fucking he load. Is a big man. He, <laughs> he, he encourages contact. So, got to give him credit. I'm not a super Tomahawk fan over the years, but you got to give him credit. They, they, uh, they play hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now, now Brent. If- we, oh, we talked about this after uh, week zero. Uh, is Jewart's job still safe at this point? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why wouldn't it be? I mean, He's another, all right. another uh, week of your defense kind of struggling. I'll put it like this, man. We had two interceptions that got dropped, and we had two fumbles laying on the ground that we didn't get on top of, so – they're doing all right. <laughs> just they just one of those weeks, man. Like they seem to have they seem to have the answers when they needed to have them. Like if you if I don't I'm sure some of you guys watch the film, but you know, in the first three downs of it, you know, we controlled it pretty well. But that fourth down they, they just they found a way. Like they keep themselves in front of the sticks usually and put themselves in manageable situations. It, they seem when they when they take those early down negative plays or the the drives they seem to struggle on. They were a completely different team than I watched against the Savages. <laughs> completely different team. Their O line was a lot better. Their quarterback played a lot better. Like I I just felt like all in all they played a lot better. You know, home field advantage, whatever you know. But they just seemed more prepared as a team for that game. Maybe because it was the Cyclones. I don't know. But I, I give them mad credit. Like, I'm telling you right now, if anybody sleeps on them when, when you're playing Mifco, you're going to get a rude awakening. I mean, and if you think about it, you you, you ran a an 18-year-old kid out of corner because your starter got hurt. That yeah. could have been a whole lot worse. How many 18-year-old corners can run in this league and be with one of the best wide receivers in the league, in my opinion? Yeah. I thought he did well. I thought he played – I mean, the kid had some catches, but I thought – I thought the 18 year old did really well. I'm sorry I say it. can't think of his name, but he, he played Javon. very well. <laughs> Javon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, huge spot for him to be in. Like, we literally just picked him up this week. Um, you know, he hasn't played he hasn't played football since he graduated high school, which last year. So, you know, I mean, he's coming fresh out of, you know, just off the couch, basically, so to speak. Like, and all of a sudden, here you are, go out here and defend one of the best wide receivers in the league, one of the better wide receivers, you know what I mean? I had this conversation with, I think, Greg earlier. You know, he's he's easily a top 10 wide receiver in this league. And you got this 18-year-old kid that gets thrust into action and has to go out there and lock this dude up. And he did amazing. (laughs) I mean, he didn't do just good. He did amazing for being in that situation. And not really knowing. He obviously didn't practice. Yeah, I mean, he's never played eight men a day in his life. And the catch he had down the sidelines was pretty sick also. He got both feet down. That's all I'm going to say. Now, it was are a you, catch. <laughs> are you considering sending uh, Laddie to soccer camp? <laughs> Fucking anybody that's got some professional kick in, yeah. <laughs> 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 Nah, Lottie's all right. He's a good dude. Lottie's wild, man. Lottie should Lottie should be the, on the kickoff anyway, not even the kicker. Lottie should be down there hitting people. <laughs> we need some of that. We need some more violence on that. All right. Let's get into the next one. Well, the last one, I should say. Thor, Thor's turn. Keystone Bowl pre uh, – not a preview. Repeat from last season. This time at the Comanche, the Vikings win 42-33. Stupid fucking t-shirts. It's the whole reason why Thor is back on there this week. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> See, waiting on me. Well, you were there. Um. <laughs> So he gets, uh, I mean, <laughs> any game we play against the Comanche, I expect to be a good game. Um, they're a pretty solid team. Uh, they had some new additions here. Um, I don't know. I didn't come on here prepared to talk about this shit. <laughs> I know that's what everybody's hoping I do here. Um, but really, it was a game where we came in. And uh, right off the bat, we just took control of the game completely. Um, you know, we we seem to have uh, came out and taken our foot off the gas in the third quarter. And, you know, they had some random big plays that happened to keep them in the game. And ultimately, um, defensively, we held them off. I mean, um, Their run game was near non-existent. Um, they couldn't run against us. They, you know, their passing game, they had a few like midfield passes, but really most of the stuff they did was just getting the ball behind somebody. Um, I don't know. It was, it was a solid game. A lot of, a lot of rivalry bickering back and forth, but as a whole, I mean, like I said, I went into this game expecting a battle with them, and that's that's what we got out of it. Did the Comanche have their starting quarterback? Yeah. Yep. Right. It didn't really look like any pieces that I knew of were missing. Um, they had 15, which is their better receiver, in my opinion. Um, they had both of their running backs, but again, they – Quarterback was running for his life. Yeah. I could probably count on one hand how many footballs he did not throw off his back foot from like the three quarters of the game I watched. Right. Um, and D-line played like that. Off, you know, they're a team that, you know, projects having one of the better, if not, they claim to have the best defensive line in the league. And, and I'm not even knocking them. I'm, what I'm getting is that um, we went into this game and both of my guards that started the week before weren't with me. And I was also transitioning to a potential new center. So considering, uh, you know, like Bailey had food poisoning, he didn't play Dunkel. Um, this was the one Saturday he had to work. So guys really stepped up and did well. And I felt like as a whole, our offensive line really controlled their defensive line as well as I could have asked for. People in the chat want to know how Q played. So here's one of those things that's tough. Everybody has a different <laughs> everybody has a different opinion on Q. Um, I feel like he played pretty well. Uh, I think he gave up one touchdown, if I'm not mistaken, himself. Um, there was definitely other catches that he gave up. Um, you know and broke down the film and, and and I did get to point out several mistakes that he made that that helped us but at the same time I think he's a terrible corner I mean in my opinion he was the better of the corners or anybody else that played corner for the Comanche on Saturday so I mean he had to he had to play the Vikings <laughs> so so I think he did all right considering Who'd you start quarterback this week? I didn't see the game, so I have no idea. Davis. Antoine played the whole game for me. So, I think Malik caught three receiving touchdowns. Uh, Davis ran one. Uh, Sean Steve had one. Um, we have a running back, Devin Clark, that has been doing really well for us. Um, he had, yeah, he had a nice run, right? So 
it's one of those where you know there's a lot of changes that have happened for us between like three weeks before the season now and i feel like we're at a point where we're starting to settle in and, and really know where we're doing or you know what we're doing and getting a rhythm going and i feel like i feel like we're, we're getting the booty where we want to be at least so you needed that ass whooping last week is what you're saying we lost by 10 points. We're no damn ass. <laughs> I, had to, I, had, I had to give you shit. You didn't show. I had to give you something. I mean, wasn't it like with nine minutes left to go in the game? Wasn't it like an 18-point lead or 20-some point? Listen, like James, if, <laughs> if I want to talk about who lead at different points in the game, we would just bring up you and the shock and all your failures as far as your oh, – <laughs> No. He but went there. If so, if we want to talk about the end of the game and what the final score actually was, I'll say ten points. And it wasn't. It, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, I like it. No, I like the games. Can't wait till the Buffalo smack your ass, Thor. <laughs> But all my failures, but I've been out of the league for three years now, and he still only has three more wins than me. Anyway, let's get on to next week's games. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) I love it. All right. (laughs) Let's get into... Uh, Raptors will get to 26 nothing forfeit win over the Savages. Skyhawks going to the Cyclones. I'll jump in here first to say I'm at I'm at 68-12. Cyclones, of course. 68-12. Yep. Oh. 82 to 6 cyclones. I got 72 to 6 cyclones. All right. Next game. Uh, Miners at Vikings. Damn. Vikings. Ooh. Yeah, Vikings uh, 66 to zero. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go 52 nothing. You get your first mercy roll game. They don't finish it. Hate to say it, but sixty-eight to six. Miners. <laughs> like, <laughs> got him. <laughs> got him. All right. Next game: Spartans at Bolts. Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm. How healthy are the Spartans at this point? I know last week going to Wilkesbury, they were pretty beat up. I'm going to say Spartans. 32 20. 32 20. Yeah, sounds like a good number. I got the Spartans. I think they forget their headset and they leave them at home, but I got them 28 <laughs> 24. Yeah, I was going to say cooler headsets prevail. 32-28, Spartan. <laughs> we're, all in, we're all in the same area here. I say Spartans 30-20. to 20. You're not going to lone wolf Thor? Not this one. All right. Buffaloes at Wildcats. 
Man, this is a this is one. Yeah, of you should have saved this one. Well, I got a couple other ones that are just as good. Hmm. Well, Flo's defense is pretty good, man. We don't talk about them a lot because of that run game. But that defense gets around the field, man. Those dudes fly around. They make plays. I got the Buffaloes winning 46-32. Mm. What do you think, Vinny? I don't know. <laughs> no. Wait, we already I, know who Vinny's picking. I think. I think, I, I think Vinny. Like, that, that's the thing, though. Like, if Ewok can pull off one of them days where he gets, like, five or six of them. That, but that's the what I'm time, thinking. The, right. But the Buffaloes can slow the game down and keep him off the field. Oh. That, would be, that would be the smart thing. But yeah, do they that, have a corner that can go all game with Ewok? Mm. Mm. Man, I don't know who you got. <laughs> now, Buffaloes is one of my favorite teams to watch, but I think this is the week the Wildcats go off. And I'm calling for the upset 36 yeah. 35 Wildcats. It's in Williamsport, too, right? It's in Williamsport. Yeah. 36 35 Wildcats. This is tough. Um, I I am gonna go Buffaloes though, uh, but man, Kerr is so right. That's the only thing that scares me. I, I I think now this is no no knock on them. I think the Buffaloes are gonna be better coached, but man, you it's tough to match athlete for athlete when you got Ewok. You got Jr. and you got Haas. That yeah, other. Haas is my X factor there. That's the thing because oh. I mean, you, cool you could you could wild cats, look at the fifty six thirty six. You could look at the flip side of that and say, well, their defense isn't the greatest, and they're playing a nasty run game that's that's run through some pretty decent defenses. You're one hundred percent correct. That's why I, I'm struggling. You know yeah, what I mean? And, and they and also that, have the they also have an X factor, their quarterback, Levi Cook. That kid can run. And he and he don't give a shit who's in front of him. He'll run them over. Yeah, I just hope they're smart with their defense as far as the Wildcats. They they, they could they could do some things I hope to hope they're they smart with that. their offense. I think mm -hmm. if this what thing they gets can it, open up by putting JR at receiver and letting Haas run the show. Now you can't double Ewok. What are you gonna do with that? I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't think it's that easy, though. I don't think it's that easy to put Jr. at wide receiver like that. Yeah, it could be. I think Jr. two years ago at wide receiver, yeah, different story. But you know, he he took a he took a pretty pretty decent injury last year that you know I'm pretty sure he's still carrying around with him. But here's you know the I mean? thing, though: if you put Corey Tallarico at quarterback, now you have Haas Jr. And Elliot, sure. all out there catching balls. Absolutely. Whoa, whoa, back up. What I miss? Is he on the roster? Corey yeah, Tallarico, yeah, he played yeah. last week. Yeah. He played yeah. last week? Mm -hmm. Or the, two weeks ago against the Warriors. Limited, but he played. That's awesome. Uh, I didn't know yeah. that. Me neither. <laughs> Damn, where the fuck you guys been? <laughs> how how is this the first time this is we just had a whole quarterback conversation for 15 minutes last week and how was his name not brought up because he's not playing quarterback for him he's a stud wide receiver too he is he sure is put wide receiver in college he was a better wide receiver than quarterback points yeah i mean i think if this if this game starts getting into that up and down pace shootout man style it's not going to favor the Buffaloes. But if they're able to grind it down and just, you know, run 10 plays on a drive and chew off clock and yards and score touchdowns, dude, it's going to be hard for Williamsport to hang with that. You're right. It could be a – I hate to say it, it could be a blowout if they don't figure it out on defense to stop that that attack that Buffaloes have. You're right. And and you and you just talked about coaching, right? You think Buffaloes are, are, are a more coached, well-balanced team 
you know, in that aspect. And they've 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 proven that run game on on some like they just ran all over the Comanche a couple weeks ago. You know what I mean? That's a good defense right there. That quick strike ability though will steal your heart. Like you come off a ten play drive and then you come right. out and they just turn right that, back around and bomb on you. That'll steal yeah. your heart quick. How who many ten play drives you got in you? Who do you think that who do you think that wears on more the the other team that just came off scoring a touchdown or your defense that literally just was on the field for six and a half minutes, you know, and grinded out a ten play drive and now they're right back on the field a minute later. And you're not deep on defense to begin with. I think Ewok got to play both ways. <laughs> that, I I think he already is. Is he? I think a lot. I think some of those guys are playing both ways. To be honest, like well, they, they should be fresh. Play. They're coming off a they, bye or a forfeit. They've had some play, as, as Hoss says, he should be playing defense too. Get your little ass out there and play. <laughs> you know they they just uh, they had some guys go down with injuries and shit too over the you know last two weeks ago. So you know how's that going to affect them? It, it, I mean, yeah. this 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 definitely has the making to be a really good game. Yeah, yeah. I'm going 44, 42 buffs. Oh, I didn't love Wolf that one. Emilio says that if number four is still at linebacker for the Wildcats, it won't matter. That's my man Keys. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It took a second. I was going through my head like, who's number four? Oh, that's keys. It's <laughs> my guy. I mean, Kerr, you did say that in our uh, our group chat earlier today about him. So, I said what? <laughs> Don't lie <laughs> about keys being a liability. I never said that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I would, I would, I'd tell him that before I'd tell you that. <laughs> All like right. Ryan, like Ryan Gosling and remember the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got Comanche at Tomahawks. Oh, shit. Damn. Yeah, that's a hell of a game. Now, the last time the Comanche was one and two, they went off the Easter bye and went one and three playing the Tomahawks. That was 2018. Now, they're one and two after Easter playing against the Tomahawks. On the road. On the road last time. Last time I was at home. On the road, cash car. This pains me to say. I gotta go. With, I gotta go with the Tomahawks. Thirty-three to thirty-one over the Comanches. I think. I think Monks is one of the most prepared coaches in the league, but I think the Tomahawks have a little something this year. I got the Tomahawks 4640. Tom- well. What was that? 4640 Tomahawk. Thor? Tomahawks 34, Comanche 28. He lone wolf in it? Nah. This this was actually my I already picked this game earlier. I had Mifco winning this. Um, I just I don't know, man. Just something about that team this year. Like they're highly motivated. You know what I mean? They got some old vets back on their team. You know they have a little bit of insight against the opponent that they're playing against too, with those old veterans back on their team. So you know what I mean? Like they're prepared at home. They're ready to go. I think they take this one. This might come down to the last drive of the game. Might go to overtime. Who knows? Tomahawks 38-36. Nice. All right. And the last game, Warriors at Mustangs. This is going to be a bloodbath. 
<laughs> I'm yeah. not talking about the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah. Are you roughing this, James? Yes, I am. Oh, shit. <laughs> you have personal security escorting you off the field? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want Who you to get hit with any helmets. <laughs> I'm going to have Vinny drop you off and pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down the street. Vinny's like, I don't want to be anywhere close to that. <laughs> yeah, I'll drop you off at the corner. Call me when you're ready. I'll scoop you up here at three. <laughs> oh, man. Where's this at? In Hazleton? Yes, sir. You know what? I got the Warriors. I know Hazleton's defense has been playing pretty lights out. And, you know, whatever. They scored 100 points last week. But, you know, the Warriors seem like a highly motivated team. The film I watch, man, they got a lot of explosive players on their offense. Um, their defense got some good, talented guys on that team, too, on that side of the ball. Um, I got the Warriors 48-40. Uh, I got the Warriors also. Um, I think it's going to be close. With all that speed with the Warriors, there's, there's a defensive guy. I think he's number 16. He's this little, but, man, is he lightning fast. Trayvon. 41-40, uh, the Warriors. I have the Warriors, 38-32. And I have the Warriors, 46-42. Buddy, here comes all the death row shit. They don't believe us. They don't believe in us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love motivating people, man. Go out there and prove us wrong. You know what I mean? Right. That's but all you, it comes down to. I, I think they give us too much credit and think that we're actually really hating. We're at, we're, we're picking football games. There's never yeah. any hate when we say what we say. Hey, man, I like to see the fact that they're succeeding, man. You know what I mean? Starting to climb out, recruited their ass off in the offseason, built a pretty solid squad, you know? I'm not saying they can't win this game. I just – I think the Warriors are just a little bit better at this point in time. And I think that's just – their offense is better than, than Hazleton's offense. All right, that's all the games. I'll go over the the pick'em rankings. Uh, Vinny is leading with a twenty-two and one record. You're welcome, Vinny. Kerr is twenty-one and two. Thor is eighteen and two. Travis is twenty and three, and Brent is seventeen and three. Still early. How do we got less than those guys? As you far as total the, games. You haven't been picking the scores for your games. I never oh, picked the score, for, but I always pick me to win. Damn. Yo, last year it was So we you're going to take your loss team. from two? All right. Now, now this year so we're not picking ago. the score for it. Fuck. No wonder we can't ever win. So we're set up for failure on this shit. <laughs> I know. They try to do this every year it's cool they, i mean thor if you want is. that loss on there i can put it on there <laughs> i mean it's fair i, I mean <laughs> <laughs> loss is a loss damn it <laughs> all right I, I own it friends it's still trash Nah, whatever, you know, is what it is. It's like everybody to get a nice lead and then come back at the end. <laughs> you don't, though. <laughs> hey, you know, last year I was doing all right. Didn't last year you, like, plummeted to the bottom? No, I don't think I finished last, last year. Yeah, I think I moved like, up in yeah. the third. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking haters, man. 
eating asses. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it from us. We will see you next week. Get your damn film to us this time. <clears throat> Tell your owners and coaches, get on the ball. All right. Be safe, everyone. Let's have there a good go. week. <laughs>